A very good evening to all our viewers and uh, welcome to Tuesday's edition of the Evening Review. My name is Taiwan Jabela, your host. Uh, let's have a look at uh, some of the news in tomorrow's Namibian Sun. Tonight in the studio, we are joined by uh, Festus Munjwa. He is a patron of the Ogaherero Genocide Foundation to share with us uh, a bit of perspectives on some of the issues that uh, he particularly has been writing about uh, in, the, in the newspapers and also as they relate to some of the debates in Parliament uh, recently. Mitiri, thank you for making time and being here. Okay, thank you for having me. Wonderful. Mm. So, <coughs> you've been um, writing a lot, in Namibian Sun in particular, um, opinions about the plans, not, uh, not the plan, as a matter of fact, it's, a, it's an implemented decision already of making the opening up the Shark Island uh, uh, site as a, as a campsite. Yes. where tourists can go and, and have fun and sleep and whatnot, you, you are vehemently opposed to that. Well, what is your issue? Well, uh, <coughs> the issue is simply this. Shark Island was a concentration camp. Yeah. It was a, a portion of Namibia in the middle of the At Southern Atlantic Ocean uh, designated for a camp con concentration camp. Mm for the prisoners of war of the, the war of 1904 to 1908 against the Herreros and the uh, over Herreros and over Herrero and the Nama. Mm. So it was a concentration camp. Now on that, in that concentration camp on those, on those rocks, mm. uh, the inmates that were taken over there, they were actually taken over there to die there. Mm. And as they were dying, those who were dying, or their, their, their bodies were decapitated, you know, chopping off their heads mm. uh, for experiments that were taken to Germany. Mm. What happened to the rest of the bodies? Now, if you look at the uh, uh, Shark Island, it's all rocks. Mm. Actually, there is no sand mm. uh, from which to dig a grave. Mm. And the, the, the dead bodies uh, were simply pushed off the rocks down into the ocean. Mm. And as a matter of fact, uh, uh, a newspaper, the Namibian, I have a copy of it, uh, reported that uh, scuba divers, they went there and they, they saw uh, human remains, bones, actually bones, mm. still some of them in chains, mm -hmm. rusted chains on the ocean floor. Mm. Now, it's a place where people were being killed. The raping was, of course, there. Mm. And then, uh, since you could not bury or leave the bones, the dead bodies on the rocks, they had to push them down. Mm. And as far as that goes, and in my opinion, that constituted a grave. Mm. So Shark Island is not just a rock, it's a grave mm. 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 because of what happened over there. The mm. death of the people, the butchering of the people, yeah. and then the pushing them all around the rock where the bodies were pushed down. It was all around it. Mm. So the whole area to me, it's, it's, a, it's a grave. It needs to be consecrated rather than desecrated mm, mm. as a holy place and a grave, mm, mm. graveyard. Indeed. So <clears throat> the, w what are you hearing? Government wants to make it a, because I know that, for example, we have the, the museum in Windhoek. It's a, it depicts 
the history of our country, the, the history of our people. But at least it's clear that uh, even visitors who go there, they, they know they are going into a museum mm. that houses the history of the country as brutal as it is. In this case, they seem to suggest, because NWR, the government um, hospitality company, is even advertising, saying, you know, come around, come have fun here. This is part of why I'm actually objecting. Yeah. And if objecting is not strong enough, I detest yeah. uh, what the government is, is planning to do to, you, to utilize that place for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we visited this place uh, a few years back, maybe two years, mm. I was in the company of the late Paramount Chief Advocate Rukoro. Mm. What they were telling us, now, who are these they? Mm. Uh, we were in a company of, uh, I wonder if I can show you who were the attendees mm. of that gathering. Mm. It was a, a group of the people from the wildlife, mm -hmm. that is now the Ministry of uh, what is it, Wildlife and Tourism, Yes, they were there. They were business people. Uh, the people from the National Heritage Council were there. Uh, the Wairoa Traditional Authority was represented by the Paramount Chief himself, uh, myself and a few others. Uh, and uh, also the, 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 the Nama uh, traditional Leaders Association representatives were there. Mm. Uh, Gop Isaac was there and Gop Cooper was there and few others. Mm. And then of course the Ministry of Education also was also represented. Mm. The office of the President was represented by the late Special Advisor Dr. Ngariku Turge Shiriange mm. was also there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so now what we're hearing from this group I can't say who said what, who said that, yes. but from uh, the people of the ministry and also the municipality of Lutheritz mm. was also there. They are the ones who are telling us that the government is planning to, uh, to, to, to make this a, a, a tourist attraction, a, a campsite mm. where tourists can, can come in and bring in development and uh, employment and all those things they were telling us. Mm. Now, we raised objections right on the floor to say, but how could you transform this whole thing into something like a, a picnic area? Yeah, leisure. And yeah, that is what we didn't like, and uh, I still don't like the idea of make, transforming it into, uh, you know what happens in a, in a, in a picnic area mm. where people go up, and they were telling us also that uh, the lovers go there, mm. they put up tents to have fun, mm. Uh, have brides and, uh, and, and picnic and so on. Now, mm. All these things to me do not, should not, and in our culture, cannot be allowed to happen in a place that is considered a graveyard. Mm. Mm. It is the highest form of insensitivity. Mm. Mm. So that is why I am not for the, the place to be a campsite, the ordinary campsite where people are having picnics and fun. Mm. It's no fun place, it's a, it's a graveyard. Yeah. What is the ideal way of uh, utilizing that site? <coughs> I think uh, what should happen, and this is, uh, as I'm talking to you now, my opinion, which is just coming from out of the blue. Yes. But I'm sure we will discuss it uh, in a proper uh, forum with our leaders. Mm. But for now, in my opinion, the, the first thing that, that must happen the, uh, the s all the stakeholders must uh, convene mm. a, a stakeholders conference to decide on the utilization of Shark Island. Mm. And when I say utilization, it must keep in mind all the time uh, the historicity of the place. Mm. Uh, it should not be done in isolation from what actually happened on those rocks. Mm -hmm. Now, when the stakeholders, in this case, I can think of the two Nama traditional, uh, the two uh, traditional authorities, the Nama Traditional Leaders Association, which is a re legally recognized and gazetted authority, mm -hmm. which could represent the Namas. Mm -hmm. Then the Oahero Traditional Authority, which could represent the Ovahero site of the genocide, mm. uh, because it will be all encapsulating all the Ovahero 
groupings mm -hmm. uh, under the title Yoherero traditional authority. It is mm. a, a universal title, really. Mm. Mm. It's not like uh, the others which are uh, clan-oriented and royal-oriented and so on. Mm. Now, if the two legally recognized uh, institutions, that's one, uh, to me, a bona fide, mm. and then the Ministry of Education could be another. Uh, the municipality of Lutheris cannot be ignored. It is in their, in their home. Mm. And also the Ministry of uh, Wildlife and is it Tourism yes. uh, must mm. also be there, and also education, because uh, mm. things like uh, the skulls and the remains, they resort under the Ministry of Education, and they mm. cannot be ignored. Mm. Then uh, government is represented, but since earlier I mentioned the office of the president was represented by the late Chiriange, mm. Uh, must also be there. Mm. So mm. once you have this uh, meeting of all these stakeholders, then I cannot uh, prejudge, but I can hope that they will come up with how to utilize this place, mm. bearing in mind its historicity. Mm, mm, mm. Indeed. Um, when, you, when you visited um, this site, with the late uh, advocate Trukoro. <coughs> what, as a descendant of the victims of that brutal history of our country, what was, what, what, what was going through your mind in that moment, uh, especially if it was your first visit ever to the, to the site? The first thing that struck my mind, I was expecting to see a, 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 a mark, mm. even if it is more than it doesn't matter, which could have represented the actual concentration camp mm. camps mm. Uh, on those rocks. Yeah. How far and wide the whole circumference of the camp. Mm. I was expecting to see some kind of a a, a symbolic uh, renewed thing like that, mm. like e even like the thing of uh, Namutoni. Mm. The Namutoni that we see there, yes. it was leveled to the ground by the forces of uh, Nehali and Bigana. Mm. But then it had to be reconstructed from the original architect mm. to be what it is today. Mm. I was expecting to see something like that on those rocks, but there was nothing. Mm. Mm. As a matter of fact, Shark Island accommodated two camps, mm. one official and one private. Mm. Uh, I was expecting to see the private side of Shark Island, which was run by Dr. Bofinger. Mm -hmm. He's the one who was in charge of the private, private one and actually demanded the decapitation of the bodies. Mm. And once the heads were taken off the bodies, he would take them over to his camp, mm. where he had all the instruments, of uh, you know sanitizing and packing them and so on. Mm. He was working hand in hand with the official side of the rock, uh, run by Dr. Eugene Fisher. Mm. So these two camps, I said, but where are the resemblance, the semblance of this? Uh, it was not there. Mm. Okay, then, uh, then what I saw there, I saw a statue, a head statue, of. Uh, Adolf Luderitz, mm. the man who acquired that whole area from the, the, the Gau of Bretagne, mm. Friedrichs, mm. Cornelius Friedrichs. Mm. Now, Co Adolf Luderitz's statue does not fit anywhere in the history of the genocide mm. because he had long died, I think, in 1850-something. He dr Actually, he drowned in the Orange River. Mm -hmm. And when it was time for the genocide, he had been dead for more than 50 years. Mm. So he had nothing to do with it. Why is he there? Mm. Then I saw a half-moon mm. sitting arrangement facing a, a stage, mm. man-made stage. Mm. And when you look at the where you are sitting down here on the side of that uh, half moon stage mm. or sitting arrangement there were plaques maybe the size of those square over there on the on the wall mm. 
each with names of German soldiers, some of them also Boer soldiers mm. who died in the wars, the First World War mm. and Second World War, but not of the Germans uh, who were killing our people, mm. who were also, must have also been killed by our people. Uh, the same names that you would see in this German church in front of the parliament. Mm. Uh, the names of the German soldiers who were killed, mm. all those fawn, 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 they are in that church. Mm. If you take those people by the definition of genocide, they are the ones who committed it. Mm. They are criminals mm. in our version of the history. Yes. Now, how do you have those criminals put in the house of God? Mm. The church in front of our parliament, the whole wall of it is the names from 1903 up to 1908, mm. you have the names of those who have died, mm. actually have been killed by our forces. Mm. They were glorified inside mm. a church of God. And if you define them as criminals, how can they be housed in the house of God? Mm. The, and, and the museum is nearby within a throne, stone so throne. Yes. Where could they not be, uh, the whole plug be put in that to be juxtaposed with the skulls that are lying in that museum. Indeed. So th th those plaques down here, I saw them also on, on, on Shark Island, and then I said, but look at this. Now, what mm. is this having to do with this genocide issue? Indeed. Mitiri, we go for a quick break, and then uh, we return. OK. <laughs> continue our conversation with uh, Mithiri Munjwa. Now, uh, Mithiri, the, the, um, you spoke about insensitivity um, of some of the activities that are happening on that island, but uh, how do you view the timing? Because uh, history teaches us that those atrocities were committed on that island. The bodies, like you said, were decapitated. And uh, they were then shipped from that very site for Eugene Fisher's uh, laboratory testing in Germany. Mm -hmm. And Namibians are still fighting for the return of some of those uh, uh, remains from Germany. As we speak, not all of them are back in the country. No, and all. they were shipped from that island. So while people are still fighting for the return of the skulls, there is leisure taking place on that island. How, how do you describe that? The <coughs> part of the insensitivity, I must uh, apportion the blame to our own government. Yeah. There was a time when uh, the late uh, Gab Cornelius and uh, Miss Ida Hoffman, mm. who was also a part of this, but then, of course, she went her own way. Mm. Uh, they have uh, collected, they have actually identified some of the bones mm. that were lying in the desert near Lutheritz, mm. and they collected this for burial, proper burial, rather than bury it in the sand. Mm. And uh, this was done by not by the government. And it was in the news mm. 
government did not step in to come and take it over mm. to do what must be done to human remains. Mm. Okay, now, when it comes to uh, this thing of uh, Shark Island where the government is searing, mm. uh, there's another one, uh, gentleman who wrote from, uh, from Lutheritz, Mr. Samuel, mm. who also wrote uh, very Flotsam. well about Shark Island. I read his article, it yeah. is well articulated also. I know, mm. I know the person incidentally. Mm. And of course then my article, and not only my article, but the way we speak generally about genocide, including this, the historical sites, mm. said all of Bulavindimba, Swakop Moon, mm. Karibeb, Van Hook, and, and all these historical sites. Mm. Government is hearing this. Why is there no effort to try to even uh, scoop out of the water some of the remains lying on the ocean floor to give, to give credence to the story mm. Uh, to show these remains which are still in chains, mm. pull them out, and then I would suggest that on, on, on Shark Island, yeah. you must have a museum kind of structure where you would keep some of these things mm. for tourists. The tourists must go there, but not necessarily for... For leisure. For, for, for leisure, and uh, what, what fun and leisure can you have in a graveyard? Mm. Uh, but for 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 the people who write history, the historiographers, the historians, mm. the students, the academicians, mm. if one could create a, 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 a building that could house all these things with government effort to pull out, the, the, I don't, I'm not suggesting that you must pull out every bit and piece of a, a bone mm. lying on the floor. Mm. But at least those that you can scoop and polish them and clean them up and then make them uh, archival mm. material so that when visitors come, they go and see and learn and write about our genocide history, not mm. so much to go and have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is my point that I want to, to emphasize. And government must take note of this and mm. have a special invigorated effort mm. to try to bring to the fore some of these things and the, 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 art, the, the skulls are not only in, in, in Germany institutions, yeah. they are all over. Mm. Uh, the University of Strasbourg in France, mm. there are about 12 uh, human remains, skulls in that university. And there were those other ones in the U.S. The then there are those uh, more than 200 lying in the museum of in, the, in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, those things, uh, government must put up an effort to try to identify all these things. What about the former East Germany when it was under the, the, the Russians? Mm -hmm. Don't we have things also maybe that might have been taken to the to the Soviet Union for their archives and so on. Why are we only concentrating in Berlin, Frankfurt, and, and, and so on? All over the world, there must be a hand for these things. Yes. Now, when you say that, Mithiri, that indeed the remains of uh, the descent of, 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 the, of, the, uh, of the two communities lie around the world, that already gives credence to the fact that uh, it shows the extent of uh, the brutality that our people suffered at the hands of the Germans. Um, which brings me to the next topic uh, briefly, uh, genocide negotiations that are taking place in this country. Yesterday, Mark Henry Venani held a press conference, and among other things, he said that uh, uh, a new envoy to replace the late Dr. Ngavire must be appointed and that the whole process must start over. Um, what is the ideal way in your, in your view going forward to, to handle this matter once and for all? I think <coughs> the first thing that must happen, the Namibian government and the German government must declare that what has been attempted by 
Mr. Polens and the late Dr. Gavirwe uh, did not achieve its objective, whatever the objective was. Mm. It, it is a failed effort that must be admitted. Mm. Once you have done that, then you must start it all over again. Mm. Now, all over again, get me right there, uh, I'm going to be literal and blunt. Yes. Start from zero. Yeah. That's literal. And you start with new negotiating teams. Mm. You don't repeat a failed team. Mm. That is the time when you now have to look at the substitute bench. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because those that are playing, they are now tired yes. or retired, and they must get out of the picture. They have had the chance. Mm. Start with completely new negotiators. Uh, and you don't start with a failed uh, something mm. and you start you know making amend here and there mm. to me it should not be a panel beating yes you panel beating a, a, a something I'm talking about zero yes when you start from zero you don't panel beat you start creating a new thing mm. so admit it was a failed effort and uh, it was rejected, it is being rejected, and I'm sure everybody now knows that this thing is, is a, a non-starter. Mm. Uh, that is why I'm saying be literal and come up with a, a blank check to start writing new figures and new things. Mm. Uh, don't try to improve on the money, the 1.1 1, 1 .1 billion. Mm. Uh, now you are penal beating. I'm not saying no, to hell with that one. To start a new thing, we don't even know what it will come up with. Mm. The figure will eventually come. Yes. It will be there in the new renegotiation. Mm. But is it all money based and nothing else? Mm. Uh, that is why we say you have to look at examples which, are, which abound mm. in the world of previous negotiations. Mm. And our favorite one is the one between the German and the Jews. Mm. Uh, if you follow that one, you can't go wrong with it. Mm. And in that one, the element of the German Chancellor, uh, which was the case in, in, in between the Germans and the Jews, mm. Dr. Adenauer was the Chancellor in Germany, but he's the one who was driving the whole thing even right into the Parliament. He convinced Parliament to negotiate with the Jews. Mm. In the case of this one, uh, uh, Chancellor Merkel is there by her conspicuous absence. Mm. She's nowhere to be seen. It's only even uh, when we spoke to some of our parliamentarian friends in the German parliament, mm. they were telling us we don't know what is happening between Polens and Dr. Gavirwe. Mm. Mm. Parliamentarians of the German government, parliament, telling us that they don't know what is happening. And to some extent, maybe even our own parliament here, what did they know before they joined the declaration? Mm. So it is a matter of starting it afresh Mm -hmm. on a clean slate where we start writing A, B, C, D anew. Yes. Now, it might be the final question or so, uh, uh, Mitiri, is um, one of the contentious issues... Oh, incidentally, you mentioned the, the Venani was talking about the new uh, special envoy. Uh, yes. Envoy is, is appointed or being appointed or is, is in the discussion or what? No, no, no this is propos uh, a proposal that... Um, since this is an, a, a, a deal that is, that is being rejected, mm. that a new envoy be appointed to then start uh, on a clean slate like you are suggesting. Because but is, it, uh, is he already identified by name? No, no, no. no. He's suggesting that uh, we must then start hunting for a new one. I think that is what he's, if I understood him correctly, that is what he's saying. To say we reject, we reject the current deal we need to identify a new envoy to start the negotiations afresh, if I understood him correctly. Yeah, okay, then we are more or less uh, sharing the same, uh, if, uh, if it is a rumor, be the, so be it. Yeah, yeah. If it is a fact, so be it. Yeah, yeah. But we also heard about uh, the rumor of uh, a new envoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not, uh, it's not a, a nameless, but we keep it at the rumor mm. side of things, but uh, we know that 
uh, mention has been made mm -hmm. of a new special envoy. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, I'm glad you say this because we also had the same rumor. Okay. Yeah. W which drives me to my last question then, Mithiri, to say one of the contentious issues uh, during the negotiation phase of this particular deal that uh, has been rejected left, right, and center is how the teams were constructed. The envoy, uh, your, a lot of people within your traditional authority did not agree with anything that Dr. Ngaviro did. Um, the construction of this team, mm. a lot of people were rejected also by many traditional, affected traditional authorities to say, we, we do not know who these people are, we, we do not have faith in them. If it were to come to another point where we need to start afresh, yeah. how must these teams be constructed? Who must make that call? Who must uh, make the, who, who the, must composi say, the composition? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Well, <coughs> I can explain it by way of a triangle. Yeah. A triangle having uh, side, you know, Three angle sides. A, B, C. Yeah. And if you can join the dots of a triangle, uh, <coughs> one side of the angle of the triangle will be, uh, let's call it G, mm. representing Germany. Mm. Uh, the upper part of the, it, it, the triangle, it, it, yes. yeah, mm. the upper part of the perpendicular line, mm. the top one is, is Germany, mm -hmm. G, angle G. Yes. When you come down, you have an uh, ang angle which I would label AC. Mm -hmm. AC means affected community. Mm. Then where the, the two sides will join, yeah. I would label that one GR, G, GRZ. Uh, GRN. G, GRN. GRN, yes. GRN. Mm. Now the GRN will represent in our resolution which was drafted by us, mm. The, 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 the interested party mm. would be our own government. Mm -hmm. Now, the angle G and AC, mm -hmm. affected community and G, Germany, mm -hmm. in our version, they will be sitting there to, di to, to, to negotiate directly mm. because it's between them and us. Mm. You can't have a proxy when we are sitting there. Mm. So what the Namibian government, the, 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 when you take the line from the Namibian government to the G, to the Germany, mm. what would they have to be negotiating? On what? Mm. Because government is not part of the victim. Mm. So, but they should be sitting there to monitor, to facilitate, to make sure the Germans are not mistreating us. Mm so that they can say, no, no, don't do that to my citizens. That should mm. be the role of our government. Mm. Now, the affected community, my friend, uh, if we have to go into the things that happened before negotiations, like memorandum of understanding and so on, we'll have to define who are these affected communities. Mm. We have been talking about the people in the diaspora mm. and us here. Uh, they would also have to come into into the picture of these negotiations. It, it, I cannot lay it down, all of it here and now, but if we come to that and it is demanded from our side, our side meaning the order, the NTLA, mm. uh, what is your, 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 the whole total package of negotiation, mm -hmm. that will be spelled out. Mm -hmm. But it has to take a triangular sitting arrangement to depict Germany, and the affected community, and then the interested party, our government. Mm -hmm. That triangular approach, mm -hmm. it cannot be a round table. Then you will have uh, a mushroom of uh, any Tom, Dick, and Harry. Mm -hmm. And where do you end? Yeah. It's not a free-for-all thing, Indeed. because the thing is specified. Uh, let's use a word for a lack of a better one. It is specificated mm -hmm. to the examination orders, yes. which are clear. Mm -hmm. No, indeed. Mitiri, it's always a pleasure talking to you. You carry so much uh, history and wisdom in you, but time is always our enemy. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I thank you for the opportunity. Indeed. That is uh, Mitiri Munjwa, uh, Festus Munjwa. He's, uh, 
He is a patron of the Oberhero Genocide Foundation, speaking to us about those issues that you just listened to. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.